Bees had been living on this backyard fire pit for a few weeks before the family who lived here lifted the cover and discovered this beautiful hive. So I gave the bees some smoke and I got to work. This was a pretty small colony, but it looked very active, so I was excited to get into the heart of the hive. I started by only smoking the outermost piece of comb where I needed to work so that the bees would move off it and I wouldn't squish any while I grabbed the comb. I used my hive tool to gently break the comb away from the fire pit. I could tell by the bright yellow color of this comb that it was pretty fresh and it was going to be very soft so I would need to be extra careful with it. And that's because comb gets darker as it ages and as the bees use it more and more over time. Hives usually have comb in a range of colors and in removals like this one, where I'm starting on the outside of the hive and working my way in, you may actually notice the pieces of comb getting darker the deeper inside the hive I go. As I removed my first piece of comb, I was excited to see that it looked like it was full of everything the bees needed to survive and that this colony looked pretty healthy. These bees did not have very much honey stored, but that wasn't too unusual for a colony this size in this time of year. And now that the bees would be under my care, I could easily feed them and give them the resources they needed. So I grabbed a wooden frame, and I was lucky that the size of the naturally built comb fit almost perfectly into my frames. This meant that I wouldn't have to trim too much or any of the comb to fit into the frames. You can see how this piece still has a lot of bees on it, and they just let me work alongside them. These bees were very gentle, and they didn't have a lot of resources to defend or a reason to get very aggressive. So after I had this piece of comb where I thought it was best in the frame, I slid the rubber bands over it to secure it in place. The goal was that as I got more comb and more bees into my temporary travel hive, the bees would start recognizing that box as their new home instead of the fire pit. But I needed to get a lot more of the hive and colony, and hopefully the queen in there, before that would happen. So I grabbed my smoker and I started to work my way farther into the hive. I did the same thing with the second piece of comb that I did with the first. I gave the bee some smoke at the top of the comb and only in the place where I needed to grab. After I felt like enough bees had left the area, I used my hive tool to detach the hive from the fire pit as best I could. This piece was a little bit larger and heavier than the first, so I was really excited to take a look at it. This piece of comb was full of baby bees in every stage of development, which is always the most hopeful sign at this point that a colony has a queen. You can see the cells that have cappings on them are where the baby bees are developing underneath, and pieces of comb like this are vital for the colony's long-term survival. So I carefully put this piece into a frame of the new hive. I wedged the top of the comb into the top of the frame, and again, it fit almost perfectly. The bees would eventually attach the comb to the frame themselves and build new comb to fill the entire frame. I secured the comb with rubber bands, which the bees would eventually chew through and drag out of the hive. Then I put this piece of comb into the new hive right next to the first. As I picked up another frame, I noticed that there were some bees already gathering on the side of the box near the grass. This was a really good sign and meant that some bees were already recognizing the temporary travel hive as their new home. I gave the next piece of comb some smoke and I repeated the process of removing it from the fire pit again. This piece was also full of brood or baby bees and it had a lot of eggs and larvae on it. So I wanted to be extra careful with it since it was such an important part of the hive and this colony would need everything they had to survive. Not every beekeeper does live bee removals, but every beekeeper that does them has a different technique. There's no school you can go to or book you can read to teach you how to do a live bee removal. It's just one of those crafts that you have to practice and perfect over time. My technique is centered around removing and relocating bees in a way that I think shows the most respect for the bees and for everything they have worked so hard to create. I always try to work as slowly and carefully as I can. I try to imagine what the bees are going through in the removal process. 
I'm essentially picking up their house and everything in it, including their entire family, and I'm taking them to live in a new place that they didn't choose to live, but one that's surely going to be safer for them. So I just kept working as carefully and as respectfully as I could alongside these bees to save these pieces of the hive. By the time I was done putting this piece into the frame, there were a lot of bees on it, and that's because those bees were sticking around to take care of all of the baby bees in the comb. This piece was full of bee eggs, which looked like tiny grains of rice, and bee larvae, which looked like little grubs. There was also a baby bee chewing her way through her cell and trying to emerge into the world during the removal process. So as I worked to remove the final pieces of comb, I just kept working as slowly and carefully as I could. I still had not yet seen the queen, and since most of the comb had been removed from the fire pit and I didn't see her on any of it, I thought she must still be somewhere on the fire pit, unless somehow I missed her. So I just kept going to put these final pieces of comb into the temporary travel hive. Then it was time to start getting the bees into the new hive, so I started to slowly scoop them off the fire pit. There really weren't too many bees here to scoop, but I did my best to get as many as I could all at once, and with every handful I scooped, I was looking for the queen. I just kept slowly scooping bees off the side of the fire pit. Some handfuls were a little bigger than others, but still no queen, and at this point I was beginning to doubt myself and starting to think that I might have missed her and she might have been on some of the comb that I already put into the hive. There just weren't a lot of bees on the fire pit left and I could easily see most of them, so I gave them some smoke to break up the clusters of bees, hoping they would disperse and I would find the queen. And sure enough, that's what happened. The queen was actually not with the majority of the colony, and I saw her with just a few attendants scurrying on the side of the fire pit. But she was a beautiful, bright red color and looked very healthy. So I put her in a clip to keep her safe, and I put her in the new hive. Then I gave the bees that were still on the leg of the fire pit some more smoke to encourage them to move off of the fire pit and into the new hive with their queen and their colony. These bees were pretty slow to move into their new hive, so I just waited for them for a while. It was the middle of the day, and I wasn't racing daylight or weather, so I gave these bees plenty of time to get into their new hive. And after waiting for all of the bees to get into their new hive, I picked them up, I took them home, and it was another great day of saving the bees.